Hey everyone, Alex here from Computer Headquarters. Today we're going to look at how different CPUs perform inside of Adobe Lightroom. We build about 10 custom PCs every day here at Computer Headquarters and every single PC gets pictures taken, about 12 pictures per computer. And so if you look at about a week worth of those, that's about 600 pictures per week. And we actually put every picture through Lightroom to make sure the picture is cleaned up, looking good and presentable to the customer. So with all those pictures going through, it's actually really important for us as a business to have those pictures being processed really efficiently especially because we don't want an employee wasting a bunch of time when he could be working on building another computer or another project. So that's actually what got the motivation for us to make this video is we were, is a real thing that we wanted to know for ourselves. And we figured, Hey, if, if we want to know this kind of information, you guys might want to as well. So we're going to look at a variety of different CPUs and what we ended up choosing. So naturally when we decided to build this computer, we wanted to consult with Adobe, see what their recommended minimum specs are and their, recommended recommended specs are if that makes any sense so let's go through that real quick i'm just going to be glancing up a little bit looking at my screen to make sure i read everything correctly so you can use pretty much any processor with this but they are recommending two gigahertz or faster and we did see some other things online where people were saying you want at least two cores um, operating system wise everything is windows 10 there's a mac os version of this but we're not talking about that today as far as RAM goes, uh, they recommend minimum eight gigs of RAM with the recommended normal specs being 16 gigs of RAM. We did 16 gigs on all of our computers that we're testing. Um, hard disk space, you need at least two gigs of hard disk space. We had a 240 gig M2 SSD. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the monitor because you really could use pretty much any monitor, but we used a 1080p display. And then graphics card is actually really important. They recommend a minimum two gigs of VRAM on your graphics card with the regular recommended being 4K, um, sorry, four, four gigs of VRAM. So we used a GTX 1650 four gig video card, which is a fairly basic video card in a normal market. They'd probably be selling for around $150. They're pretty old now. I think they're like two years old, something like that. But with the crazy market that's going right now, there's like, I think they're going for like $300, but that's another subject for another day. Um, anyway, that's what, that's what we have in our system and that's what they recommend. So now let's go through different CPUs. I just want to address something before we jump into any of the results or the testing. So today we're testing an i3-9100F, an i5-9400F, an i7-9700F, and a Ryzen 9 3950X, which probably sounds pretty crazy compared to those last three processors. So. We have the, th the 3950X, that really high-end CPU I just said. We already had that computer built. That's what we were doing all our photo editing on before, but it was also where all our video editing was being done. And now that our video editor's full time on it, there's no time for our photo editor to jump in there. So this computer, that's what it's for. And we're not gonna build another 3950X type computer just for this Lightroom editing, right? So we saw this more as a challenge. How cheap could we go and recommend to you guys as well to save the most money to build a photo just for photo editing only. This isn't for video editing. You might want to go a lot crazier if you're doing video editing, right? So that's the idea behind this. And so if you're thinking like, oh, you know, what about Ryzen 3600 or 3700X and a bunch of other Ryzen processors, they're going to be really good too, but there's the price is just a lot higher right now. They're not as easy to get. And for instance, the 9100F that we started with, we were able to secure one of those for only 70 bucks. Um, that's why we bought it. That's why we started at that price. We also can get the motherboards really cheap for like $25. I'm not saying you can do the same thing, but that's what we were able to get. So we wanted to start really cheap and then we wanted to stick with that platform. So we're sticking with that same platform on the 9100F. Um, so it was like, I think it was a B365 motherboard. And so that's the motherboard we're going to stick with. And then we upgraded as I, as I mentioned up to the 9400 and then up to the 9700. So I hope that explains it. If you're thinking, oh, I really want to know more about Ryzen, feel free to comment. If a bunch of people comment and say, we want to see the same numbers, but with like Ryzen processors, we can make a whole nother video if, if you guys really want it. Anyway, so let's jump into some of the, the performance and the testing. 
All right, guys, so Derek's going to edit some photos here in Lightroom. He's got two photos selected. They're both of the same computer, two different shots of that computer, and it's a computer that has a lot of RGB. So he's going to do a lot of cleanup on those. He's going to mess with the exposure, the highlights, the shadows, the white light, and he actually checks during this, and he sees that the CPU is only be being used 25%. But as you'll see here in just a second, with this i3-9100, it crashes. So guys, I was trying to import photos from the camera and Lightroom crash. Most of the time, this doesn't happen. But if you're running on a i3, well, definitely loading up Lightroom right now. Okay, so Derek's made it back into Lightroom, and now he needs to take the photos from his source SSD drive and bring them back into Lightroom and. As you can see, when you import the photos, it's just it's a little bit slow on the i3. It's it's pretty slow. I guess you don't have the baseline looking at some of the other CPUs, but you'll see later that, that just bringing the files in, it's a little bit on the slow side. And then as mentioned, you know there was that crash that happened. We actually did a lot of testing off camera that you won't see, but the crashing actually was a repeatable thing that only happened on the i3 and would never happen on the i5 or i7. So we really don't recommend the i3 if you're doing a lot of photos. Now, if you're only doing a couple photos here and there, it probably won't be so bad, but you know, as you'll see, we're doing you know 600 plus photo batches and things like that, so pretty pretty large amounts. So we're gonna just watching, we're just watching him now uh, crop a bunch of photos that he's gonna be using for that 600 file batch, and uh, that's what you're looking at here. Derek's now finished rendering the files, and we can see his results. Here we go, we're all done with those photos. Okay, next up, as the screen says, the i5-9400F. These are a really good bang for the buck processor. You can grab one of these used on eBay for about 120, 130 bucks. New, more like 140, 150, but uh, Derek's doing a really good job here with this CPU. It's going a lot smoother. He's not getting any errors and he was able to import all those files as you just saw a second ago there on the screen. The files imported super quick, uh, which is what he wants. You know, he's not wasting time just standing there waiting. And now that he is doing some editing of those photos, cropping and everything um, and changing values, it's going really smooth and fast. So. Um, he seems pretty happy with the CPU. It's not the best one of all time, but the actual user experience is a lot smoother than the i3 and there's no hangups on it. So this is just watching time-lapse video and then he's gonna get a rendering result here in a second. Okay, so Derek's doing the final rendering, clicking of the buttons and let's see what we got. Wow, basically cut the time in half compared to the i3. So now we're going to look at the 9700F, but we're not going to watch Derek do all the importing and photo editing because it just takes a lot of time and I'm sure you guys value your time. So we're just going to give you the result. 25 minutes, that's pretty fast. It's six minutes faster than the 9400F we just saw, and it's a lot faster than the 9100F. We ended up settling with the 9700F for what we're actually going to use because Derek did say it felt a lot snappier and faster to use, and he's doing this for a job. It's important. But for a lot of people, it's really hard not to recommend the 9400F since you can get one for so cheap. In some cases, it's, it's a pretty close price even to the i3, and it's about half the price of the i7. Now let's talk about the most exciting processor of the day, the Ryzen 9 3950X. We didn't show you any footage of Derek editing any of the photos with his 9700F, but we gotta show you some 3950X footage, right? As you can see, the 3950X does cost a lot more money.